There are buildings, superstructures that you only expect to see in sci-fi movies, and this new Saudi project is one of them. The Saudis have imagined a futuristic vertical city called The Line that has no cars, produces no pollution, runs an ecosystem of both people and lush vegetation, and will somehow do all this while sitting in the middle of a barren desert. Now, if you are wondering how this is even possible, then I am here to help. In this video, I will show you how the Saudis came up with the idea for the line, how much it will cost them, and if it is even possible. Now, to understand what the line is, first, I need to introduce you to the bigger project it falls under, Neom. In 2017, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia introduced the world to a vision he had for a futuristic utopian city called Neom that would be built in the Tabuk province of Saudi Arabia, near the Red Sea. The area is located on the Gulf of Aqaba and the Red Sea with the Straits of Tehran connecting both of them. On the opposite side of the Tehran lies Sharm el-Sheikh, which is an Egyptian city that is a tourism hotspot and is one of the most popular and expensive seaside resorts in Egypt. Most likely, the Saudis have been watching this success with some envy for some time, and the entirety of Neom could be an effort to duplicate that success. So, what exactly is Neom about? Neom is a collection of futuristic superstructures that is at the center of an initiative called Saudi Vision 2030. This initiative is the country's method of reducing its reliance on crude oil, diversifying its economy, and accelerating research in several science-based fields. Now, Neom itself is divided into three main parts. The first part is Oxagon. At a basic level, Oxagon is a $500 billion futuristic floating structure lying on the shores of northwestern Saudi Arabia. It has an ambitious design, an octagon-shaped megacity that the crown prince has proclaimed will be a paradigm where people, industries, and technology can interact in harmony with nature. Half of the city will float on the 600-meter deep Red Sea, and it will have the largest hydrogen production facilities, forming the basis of its hydrogen economy. There will be no cars, only high-speed rail transit systems. However, it will feature air travel and ports that will have a capacity of around 3.5 million TEUs, making it one of the biggest in the world. The second part of Neom is Trojena, and it is here that the Saudi ambition is taken to a completely different level. Trojena will be a world-class destination carved out of or into Saudi Arabia's highest mountain range. We are talking about a superstructure on mountains as high as 1,500 meters to 2,600 meters above sea level, and it will cover about 60 square kilometers. But that's not even the most impressive part of the project. The climate in these mountains varies between months, so the Neom team will create different experiences for different different times of the year. Eventually, there will be a skiing resort, music festival, mountain biking, and a host of other fun and relaxing activities. The third part of Neom brings us full circle to the line. And if any of the projects I just mentioned sounded impressive, then this one is the showstopper, because it is the most integral part of the Neom project, the line. On the 25th of July, 2022, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, unveiled the line as a revolution in the world's approach to civilization that will prioritize humanity before anything else. In simpler terms, he wanted the line to be the model for how future worlds would look. And the vision is beyond stunning. The line will be a 500-meter-high superstructure of reflective glass that will have a width of about 200 meters and will stretch 170 kilometers through the desert, cutting through the mountainous terrain. Within the line, 9 million residents will find a home. And despite that insane population, the line will only take up just 34 square kilometers of the desert. Like Oxagon, the line will run entirely on renewable energy. Now, I don't know if that renewable energy will be sourced from the hydrogen plants they are creating, and I'm not sure how the entire concept will work, but that's part of what 
makes the project exciting. Most of what the line will become upon completion will be innovated from scratch. And this becomes more clear when you realize that the line will have no roads, no cars, and will produce no carbon emissions. Since the focus is prioritizing humanity above commerce, residents will have access to all the facilities they need within a five-minute walk. However, if they need to visit someone or explore the entirety of the building, a high-speed rail that runs the full horizontal length of the line in 20 minutes will take them wherever they want to go quickly. The structure of the line is divided into three different levels that can be accessed through three dimensions of movement, up or down, or across. This concept has been termed as zero-gravity urbanism by members of the Neom team. The first level of the line will be pedestrian. No roads, no cars, only paths and green parks that encourage walking and other leisure activities. The second level will function as a service level, and it will feature shops and a host of other commercial spaces where residents can access goods and services. The third level is the lowest level, and it will serve as the backbone of the city. This is where people and goods will be transported across the city with the aid of the high-speed transit system. The city's features don't end there. Artificial intelligence will also come in to play a major role in the residents' way of living. Automation will be the new normal, promoting efficient throughout the futuristic city. The city will also feature digital air, and what that means is that there will be free high-speed Wi-Fi for all residents in the line. The weather will also be manipulated all year round to serve the residents' needs. We have already seen this happen in Dubai. Through cloud seeding technology and a couple of other new solutions, artificial clouds will be created and rainfall will occur more often than not in the desert location. Everything from the energy to the water that the residents drink will be 100% renewable. On the more business, socioeconomic side of things, the city will not operate under Saudi Arabia's existing governmental framework. It will have its own tax system, its own liberal labor laws, and an independent judicial system. So the next question you might want to ask at this point is how much? How much will all this grand project cost? The price for the line. To answer the question of how much a project as audacious as the line will be, first we need to go back to 2017, when Project Neom was first announced. At the time, a lot of ideas were thrown around. On one hand, the team spoke about having flying cars, robotic stewards, and a couple of other sci-fi inspired elements, but it sounded too good to be true, and no one believed it would see the light of day. But the critics wouldn't be the first to underestimate the will of the Souths, and in 2019, construction officially began. The first slated time of completion was 2025, but several delays pushed that date further down to 2030. At the heart of the delay is the fact that the project was slated to cost $500 billion, and this insane sum was going to come from the Saudi government and the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, a sovereign wealth fund chaired by the prince himself. However, recently that cost has doubled, and now, the Neom team have stated that any hopes of a 2030 completion will require, at the very least, a sum of $1 trillion. But if you ask me, I think they are still grossly underestimating how much Neom will cost. The problem with projects like the line is that only estimates can be made, but no one can accurately tell how much a futuristic linear city will cost. Why? Well, because no one has ever made a futuristic linear city, and so $1 trillion is a conservative estimate. The line will probably cost twice as much, if not more. It happened with the Panama Canal expansion. A project that was meant to cost $4 billion went on to cost almost $6 billion. And that's for a non-futuristic structure. Another good example is the Tesla story. Elon Musk tanked hundreds of billions of dollars and missed numerous deadlines while he was trying to bring the first electric vehicles to reality. The line is an incredibly expensive, incredibly risky venture that cannot afford to fail. Because if it does, it might ruin the Saudis. So, you might want to ask, why on earth are they even building the line? The many reasons for the line. Saudi Arabia has been in a rebranding phase ever since the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman took the reins of power. He might not be the king, 
but everyone knows he is in charge. And the reforms he has made over the following years have eased up many of Saudi Arabia's strict laws. Today, Saudi women can now drive freely, and they can also travel without the aid of a guardian or their husband. So, Saudi Vision 2030 is the Crown Prince's response to Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and if he is successful, Neom will be the number one travel destination in the world, which will take the kingdom's economy from oil to tourism. On the other hand, there has been a huge population increase in Saudi Arabia, especially in the younger demographics. At the moment, Saudi Arabia has a population of under 35 million, and by 2030, that number is expected to be north of 50 million. This means that more jobs need to be created in the coming years, and a project like the line can create up to 380,000 new jobs, which will definitely help to keep unemployment at bay. These jobs will serve the 9 million residents of the line and the 100 million annual visitors it is expecting to have by the end of the decade. You can already imagine the positive financial impact those figures will have on the Saudi economy. Let's be realistic for a second and ask a very important question. Will the line ever become a thing? The Saudis are not immune to abandoning projects in the past, so why will this be any different? Well, maybe because this is not the first time someone is attempting to build a vertical linear city. In the 1880s, the Spanish city planner, Arturio Soria Mota, had dreamt up a city with a similar concept where every resident would be as close to nature as possible while still leading an urban life. There were also plans for something similar at the birth of the Soviet Union, and it was partially implemented in the cities of Volgograd and Magnitogorsk. And in South America, this same concept was the foundation of Brazil's capital city, Brasilia, that they commissioned in the 1950s. Now, you can argue the success or lack of the projects I just mentioned, but one thing you cannot argue with is the fact that neither Russia nor Brazil have the technology or even the money that the Saudis currently have to pull off a project of this scale. The question of fruition is left to time. Only time will tell if the line will be a success.